page 66, Ode to Joy. Now in the previous video, or the previous page, whatever, they introduced you to the F major scale. It has one flat, a B flat. Well here on page 65, they're introducing you to the key signature for F major. It has one flat, a B flat, imagine that. This way, by putting the, fl the flat sign in the key signature, then they don't have to put it in front of each note. It's just understood that all B's, no matter where they are, all B's are flatted. That's it. So we've had C major, no sharps or flats. We've had G major, one sharp. Now we get F major is one flat. It's really important, you know, but if you'll just learn the scales, the, you'll just you associate with the key signature. You just know which notes to play because you know the scale. So you know which flats or sharps are involved. It really makes it easier. Now, Ode to Joy. 4-4 four, four time, key of F major, got one flat. We see repeat signs. The last two lines are surrounded by repeat signs, so we're going to play those twice. We got quarter notes, and eighth notes, and half notes, and we got some dotted rhythms. So we've got to talk about those. And the whole notes, of course. Starting with the right hand, you're starting with third finger on A, put you in this position. And we're when I put my hand in this position now, I have to put it on the B flat, not the B natural, because there's a B flat in the key signature. All Bs are flatted, so that it goes here. And it's there. All quarter notes. Hopefully this part isn't too much of a problem until you get to the last measure. One and two and three and you got that dotted rhythm. So the A is on one, and that takes up one and a half beats, then the eighth note comes on the and of two, so it's one and two and. See, the dot comes on two. One and dot and two. That's the way he's looking at it. Once you kind of got an idea, then you just feel it. One, two, something like so. That's the dotted rhythm, big deal, I hope. Go down to the third line. Here. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and Then the last line's the same as the second line, whatever. Left hand, whole notes. F C then a B flat. Remember the B flat. It's in the key signature. And then the A C. Let's go down to the third line. You C, C, and then you're gonna cross over for the C sharp here. And then thumb again. Now they put a natural sign in front of the B. Because if they didn't have a natural sign, it would be a B flat because of the key signature. So it's a B natural. And then thumb on the C. And the natural sign in front of the C is in parentheses. Because they're, they're being nice to you. It's a courtesy sign. It's a C natural anyway. Because the C sharp in the previous measure was only good for that measure. And once we get into this measure, it goes away. So a lot of publishers won't do that. You won't get this thing in parentheses or whatever. They don't tell you anything. You just have to know it. It's a C natural. And the last line is similar to what you had, except at the end you get the full F chord. Put the hands together. Connect everything as best you can. One and two and three and four and. Now let's go down to the third line. One and two and. That's melody right there. And then the last line is similar to what you've had before. But you can do that, work out the hesitation so the beat is steady at whatever speed you choose to take. You can go slow. We can speed it up later. Then we add the articulation, which in this case is just the slurs. And it's, it's by the phrases. The first line is a musical sentence. It's a phrase. That's one sentence. And then the second, second line is the same thing. But the third line has two, two phrases in there. Lift up between these. 
and then the last line. So just lift up between the phrases. The left hand you play as connected as you can. You can't because they're chords. There's a little silence between them, but just a little bit. Don't put in a big, big silence. Then once you can do that, then we can add the dynamics. They don't give you a lot in dynamics. It's loud at the beginning, whatever you think loud is, and that's the melody. That's the right hand. Keep this left hand soft. hear this melody and then you get down to the third line now it's soft the left hand has to be very soft and then there's a crescendo in the third major we're going to go back up to loud but we don't want to get loud until the last line so you plan it out so I would suggest maybe at the, th the third line third major or measure 11 is that it yeah here Maybe every two beats go up just a little bit, a little louder, louder, and then now you're loud. So you have to plan this crescendo out. If you don't, you'll be loud within a couple of beats. You go. See, I'm loud already, and that's no, we don't want that. You plan it louder, louder. Now loud. Have to hold back on your crescendos there watch out on those now once you can do that then we can start thinking about the speed you can find recordings of this it's the fourth movement of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony go listen to Beethoven's Ninth Symphony or search Ode to Joy people are singing to this uh, and so it's whatever speed is A lot of people would consider that a more of a moderato speed, not a fast speed, but it's all relative anyway. But in my opinion, I wouldn't take it any faster than what I just played. But however fast you choose, make sure it's accurate all the way through. Now I'd like to play this with you very slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms. Not going to do any dynamics, but we will do the repeat just like it's marked. So I'll give us four counts. Let's try it together. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. 